Hi guys, in the previous video, which you can find by clicking on the link up here, I showed you how to look for the start of ranges. And there are a number of things that you can focus on. One is the time of year. So for example, this was Christmas and you will find December, most years things start to slow down. So this was an example. Summer, generally, last year wasn't as noticeable, uh, but generally in the summer, price will go sideways. And then previously, the previous year, this was another December one when everything went slow. So I've shown you the potential setups and things to look for. Now, in this video, I show you some real world examples. And I'm going to make this into a bit of a mini course. I will be posting some more examples over the next week or so. I wanted to show you this. This is the Aussie dollar. And this is going back years. And some of you who have been with us for years will remember this. This is 2012. This was a move on the AUD. It was over the summer of 2012. So this was a range and it was basically, it was bouncing off the 78.6 fib at the top and down here, it was bouncing off the 50% fib. So it was going between the two, it didn't look it, but this is a 350 pip range. Now the EMA clearly now is not helping I seem to recall there was a decent EMA up here at the time as well. So we would maybe have to look, maybe it was the daily that was up here, but that's what you would be looking for. You will be looking, I mean, clearly here, it's just bouncing off. Every time it touched, it was like a finger in the fire tray, touched off, touched off, touched off. And this is weekly guys. I mean, this is not sitting in front of your computer all day. This is putting a forward, forward order in and walking away. And it would have won once, twice, three, four, five, six, seven times on a weekly, on a long, sorry, on a short and on a long, you might have lost twice and won four times. So this was range trading on a weekly and it was not difficult. And I say, I do recall, uh, there will be videos somewhere of it that uh, in the archive, but I do recall that I'm sure there was a 200 EMA up here. So this was the Aussie in 2012. So we take that off now. And then once again, in 2013, the Aussie did it again. And this is, no, this is a really good example. So the Aussie, again, is bouncing around 9450, 9460. Here, you're looking at placing your stop 70, 80 pips away. So it's the limit of why we would want to go with the pips. You also had a trend line in place and the range was 280 pips. So even if you're risking 70, 80, the risk reward is still there. And what's it doing? It didn't quite get to the 78.6, but it was bouncing off the 50. So it did it again. I've also shown you the, I like the Aussie dollar. Technically the Aussie dollar is probably one of the more predictable of the pairs. And it does do, I've shown you in the past in these sessions about uh, trading flag pattern trades on the, the AUD. This again, so 2016, it did it again. Now there were some nasty spikes in 2016 and we didn't have uh, an EMA is above it, as I recall, but basically it was bouncing off the 78.6 fib again. I mean, these again are weekly. So on numerous occasions, it tried to break through, but this is why I say that the Aussie is technically probably one of the most predictable pairs to trade. The bottom, it was bouncing off the 55 EMA. And again, it's a 200 knob pip range. Obviously it went skewy there and then it came back and then it went off and then finally it broke and went away. And yet again, so this is 2019, it was in a range, it was bouncing from here, move that to there. And it came back up again to the 78.6 on the weekly and twice rejected there. It was bouncing off the 50% fib. So just notice how often this pair respects technical analysis more than most. New Zealand dollar. Again, at the moment you look at this, okay, we say this is now in a range. This is on the daily. It is bouncing from 6,400 and it is bouncing up to 6,500. 6,400, you put your stop under the 55 EMA, it's 30 pips away, it's three to one gain, four to one gain. Again, this is more interesting for the long than the short in that you've got a big area for your stop. Don't forget to like and share this video. And if you haven't already subscribed, do it now and make sure that you sign up for the rest of this mini series, all free of course. Catch you later.